Hello, I'm Jeff Zygman. I'm a finishing technology associate, and I'd like to just go over a few of the uh, benefits of uh, the Apollo spray system. What we're going to take and do here today first is we're just going to go ahead and take and uh, show you a few key advantages of the gun itself when you're in the shop spraying or on the job site. First thing we're going to take and do today, we're just going to go ahead and talk about a couple of key features on the gun itself. Number one, on the back side of the gun, there's a thumb screw on the back side which is going to allow you to increase and decrease the amount of flow through the gun to add additional material in while you spray. On the head of the housing, another key feature that this gun offers is a fan control. When rotated all the way to the left, what it's going to do for you is it's going to allow you to give you a fan pattern. If you want to spray a door, possibly a set of kitchen cabinets or a face frame, just rotate the head all the way over to where you're in the left position and allow you to give your fan pattern. And when in tight corners, right away rotate the head over to the right side and this is going to give you a round pattern so you can get the tougher corners in the cabinets and such. Let's just go ahead and turn the system on today to show you a few of the key benefits of the Apollo Spray Systems gun. First thing we're going to take and do today is we're just going to go ahead and lay down a nice flat even coat and a fan pattern. Again, rotate the head of the gun all the way to the left and at this point you're ready to go ahead and start spraying. We're going to increase the amount of material through the gun so we get a nice flat even coat. Let's just go ahead and put some material down today. One thing you really want to look for in a good quality spray system is number one, how well the material has been atomized. Just by looking you can see all the driplets of the material are the exact same size. That's what gives you such a nice flat even coat, which is really going to minimize the amount of sanding you're going to have to do between these coats. Again, I'm going to go ahead and take and rotate the ring over. And this is going to allow us to go to a round pattern. Again, if you're trying to get that hard to reach corner in the cabinet and you don't want all that additional overspray all over the rest of the project, let's just go ahead and show you quick. Just by increasing or decreasing the amount of material, we're just going to go ahead and lay down a nice round pattern. And you can decrease it or increase it as much as you need, just depending on how much spray you really need in that tight corner. We're just going to go ahead and take it right down to almost if we want to take and we want to airbrush. Just by looking, you can really tell how good of an adjustment this gun has if you want to get in them tight corners. Again, that round pattern really comes in handy if you got to burn a small area in on the project and you don't want all the additional overspray. Just a couple of key advantages on this gun. Just like all your other conventional guns on the market today, if you do have to adjust the pattern when you're doing your fan from a horizontal to a vertical, basically all you got to take and do is just rotate the head over, a lot like the other guns on the market, and just simply snug it up. Once you have adjusted that, I'm going to go ahead and again rotate over to the left with your fan pattern. And at this point, you can come in and you can shade those hard to reach areas in. We're going to increase the material here slightly. It really allows you to get full control over the system. One other thing I always like to show on is with a good quality spray system, just to show you how much overspray you're really going to get in the shop at this point. We're going to rotate this head back over, snug it up so that way we're getting our standard fan pattern. And you can see right now I'm really soaking the material on. We're just going to hold this card up here so I can just give you a real good idea really how much overspray you actually get. 85% efficient, 85% sticks to your project, and about 15% goes up in the air, which is really, really good for a quality spray system. One of the last things we want to take and cover here today, I got two things. Number one, I'd like to cover the simple breakdown of this gun. As well, we do have some tips and needles to choose from depending on the project that you want to work with because every viscosity material does require a different needle if you want to get that true, good quality, fine atomization on your projects. We're going to go ahead and shut this off today and go ahead and hook the hose. And we'll set the gun down over here in the corner for safe gun storage. One nice thing about the system as well, when you are done with your gun, we have a quick connect on the top of the machine, so this way it allows you to store the gun when you're done with it. Holds the gun vertical, and you can leave your material in there between your coats, so you don't have to worry about bumping it and knocking it on the floor. One of the next things we're going to cover again, as I said, is simple gun breakdown. To break our system down, I'm just going to grab this new gun out of the case here, and I'll grab the case as well so I can kind of show you what you're going to get when you get this system. Number one thing you're going to get is your instruction manual. Definitely, if you have any questions on it, always feel free to call us or refer to your instruction manual if needed. In the kit, what you'll also find is a wrench to break this tool down. What we also include is the lubrication. Nice thing about the lubrication is you don't have to worry about it contaminating your materials. We do have a special lubrication that we apply on this gun on occasion. 
First place I like to hit this gun with the lubrication is right here where the needle's at where it goes into the packing. I'll take and put a small drip on that. Just helps to keep the gun running a little bit smoother. As well, I like to put just a small amount on these threads where the air cap is actually tightened up. Just make sure you put a little drip of oil on there uh, every so often. And feel free if you ever need any extra oil, you can always call the company up and get additional oil from us. One of the next things we're gonna take and do here today is we're just gonna go ahead and show you a simple gun breakdown. The first thing we're gonna take and do is we're gonna remove the air cap. Now the air cap, it does come in different sizes depending on the uh, material that you wanna work with. I'll quick reach over here and grab the, uh, the kit that we offer and it really all depends on what you need. Just to quick show you the other air caps that we offer as well as the needles. Again, we have a large variety of needles just depending on the project that you wanna do. Starting down from a .8 all the way up to a 2.5 for your very thick viscosity materials. Again, if you have any questions on the needle, refer to your manual as well. Feel free that you give us a uh, call and we'll give you tech support. Uh, just ask for Jason. What we're next gonna take and do today is we're just gonna go ahead and take and uh, finish dis uh, disassembling the gun. What we're first gonna take and do is just remove the thumb, th thumb screw from the back side of the gun <clears throat> and this is gonna allow us to remove the needle. So what we're gonna take and do is we're just gonna squeeze the trigger today and that's gonna bring the needle back just enough to where we can pull the needle actually out of the gun. Once you get the needle out of the gun, what we're next gonna take and do is we're gonna go ahead and take and remove the fluid tip. Now to take this fluid tip off, again, in your set, you're gonna find that wrench to disassemble it. We're gonna first take and loosen up the fluid tip. Once loosened, just quickly remove. Now what you will find after you've used this gun for a while, you might find that a small amount of material that will build up on the inside of here. However, with your cleaning solvents, it can easily be cleaned out. What we're next gonna take and do today is we're gonna go ahead and take and remove this plastic ring that goes around this, uh, the head of the housing. To take this off, again, use your wrench and there's a small area that you want to get down inside of to pop this little cap off. It takes just a second to remove it and once removed, you can pretty well see down inside of the housing of the gun. Now what we're going to take and do now is we're just going to go ahead and remove the air passageway from this gun where we actually have that adjustment for our fan control and we'll show you just a bit about that. First, let's just go ahead and remove the screw. Now to take this screw out, use your wrench. We're just going to go ahead and take and loosen this thing up today. Now folks, when you take and you do this, make sure you're working over a good sized workbench. You don't want to drop any of these parts and pieces down onto the floor of your shop. Once you got this thing taken apart, once you loosen that up, it should remove from there. We got to loosen up just a little bit more. There we go. We're going to go ahead and take and remove that assembly. And here's what the inside of the housing of the gun actually looks like. More than likely in the shop, you're not going to have to take this part of the gun apart very often. However, a lot of the woodworkers do. Once you got that removed, what we're going to go ahead and take and do now is show you a little bit about the actual fan, uh, how we do the fan pattern on this thing. If you take and you look on the inside of this plastic piece, what this is going to show you is, as you slowly open up that fan pattern, at first you'll be on a round pattern. As you can see right here on, the, pl on the, uh, the plastic part of the housing of the gun, where we have our adjustment for our fan control, as you open this thing up, you can see as you open it, this will actually allow you a fan pattern on the gun. What it does is it opens up both sides of this plastic ring, allowing all your additional air material to come right through the, through the actual cap itself. When you open that up into its, to where its both sides are opened all the way up, this is gonna allow the air to come through the ears of the actual cap. And as you decrease the size of this, as you decrease down in size to where it's just a small circle here on both sides, your material is actually been coming right through the very tip of the cap. And that's what's going to allow your round pattern. As you can see on the cap itself, there are really tiny orifices right there in the very center of it. That really helps to atomize that material to give you that really true quality finish. One of the last things we're going to take and do here today is we're just going to go ahead and take and put this gun back together. Now to put it back together, all we're going to take and do is number one, we're gonna go ahead and take and put this assembly back together to where we got this part aligned properly. Just make sure when you take this thing apart, and I'll quick take it apart here, just so that you see. Gotta grab that needle here today for something to poke down inside of there so I can get it to separate. And once it separates, just to quick show you. When you go to put this plastic ring on, make sure that you don't have it upside down. And if you have it upside down, the worst thing that could happen is you'd, all you'd be able to do is just a fan pattern. And if all you get is just a fan pattern, just simply flip this ring over and you'll be back in the correct position. Now that we are, let's just go ahead and take and reassemble it. What we're last going to take and do, let's quick get the uh, screw out here today. 
go ahead and drop that out. I'll drop this down inside of here. As you can see down inside of there where the screw actually goes into place, it is slightly tapered, so you don't have to worry about putting it in the wrong hole. Once you got it in place, what we're last going to take and do is just quick take. Are you having fun yet? At this point, what we're going to take and do is we're just going to go ahead and take and align this screw to where it lines up with that hole perfectly. Once you have it into place, just make sure that screw is dropped all the way down inside of there. Take that screwdriver and just push it down just a little bit further. Now we'll go ahead and take and put it back onto the gun itself. Now on the gun, just make sure you line it up with that screw and just simply tighten it up to where it's snug. We're just going to go ahead and take and align that today and get it as close as we can. And the uh, best way of doing this is just take a look at it right before you put it on. And as you slowly align it, it should fall right into place. Right about there. And what we're last going to take and do is take our screwdriver and we're going to quick tighten this up. I like to hold it good and steady here. Alright, we're just going to go ahead and finish snugging this up here today. And once you get this to where it's just snug, it should be pretty well done as far as putting the uh, the housing back on the gun. Just check that to make sure it's snug, which it is. And what we're last going to take and do, as far as putting this gun back together, is we're going to last take and get this plastic ring snapped back into place here. Just make sure you got this thing on the correct direction. And when you put that on, just make sure it snaps all the way into place and just look around the gun to make sure it's all the way down. We'll go ahead and take and put the fluid tip back in. And when you put the fluid tip in, just like when you tighten down the inside of the gun, you want to make sure that you don't have this too loose and obviously too tight. So what we're going to take and do last is we're just going to go ahead and take and just snug this up and get it just towards snug. Now if it's too tight, this ring is going to bind. And at this point, I'm going to honestly admit, I might have that just a little bit too tight today. So I'm going to back that off just a little bit. You know what? I think that's going to work out really good today. We're going to go ahead and stick with that. And last take and get this needle in place. The needle in place. And we'll get that thumb screw that's spring loaded back on the back side of that. And we'll get this in place and we'll get this snug as well. And the last thing in the gun is putting the cap back on. Like when you put this cap back on, something we always suggest that you do is put a little bit of that lubrication on that before you thread it all the way on. Just keeps, just keeps it working a lot better in the shop. One of the last things I want to cover here today again are the needles themselves. When you go through your instruction manual, it's going to tell you individually which needle is best for the material that you want to work with. Just make sure you go over your manual as early as possible. And again, if you have any questions on how these needles match up with the materials that you want to work with, always feel free to give us a call at the company for tech support. However, if you read the manual, it's really broken down, so it's very easy to understand. If you have any questions at all, again, feel free that you call us. Thanks again.